Hello, everybody. It's Steve Grisetti, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com Guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. And here we are in part eight of our eight-part basic training with Adobe Premiere Elements, where we've got a finished movie and now we're ready to output it. I do want to say at the onset here that we've only taken a broad strokes look at the program. There's a lot of stuff in here. There are libraries of graphics and special effects. There's a library of music. There are ways to edit and control whether you're working with the existing scores package of music or whether you're working with your own music off your hard drive. There are ways to edit and control those built into the program. There are a number of tools here we didn't even touch on yet. So it's actually a very, very deep program, but we just wanted to give you an overview and show you how the program basically works. There's also built into the PC version of the program some tools for uh, authoring and outputting DVDs. You don't find that in the Mac version. And here in since version 2022, the program has also included a number of output options that were not even available in earlier versions of the program. To output your movie, you simply go over here to export and share in the upper right hand corner. And on this page, there is a basic quick export option, which I never use. But if you just want to not think about what you're going to output and just output a 1280 by 720, which is kind of medium high resolution, uh, you can do that right from this screen. In most cases, you're probably going to go to devices here and select from devices computer. This is the largest number of options because here you can output an ultra high definition 3840 by 2160 video. You can output HD. Uh, you can output 1280 by 720 or go all the way down to even standard resolution 720 by 576 for PAL and 720 by 480 for NTSC video. So a lot of options here. Most of these options will give you an MP4, which is an H.264. Don't worry too much about all that. That is just sort of the universal language for video right now. And you may notice if you've used the program for a while that some of these new options are available here too. You can actually output a video that is taller than it is wide or square, 1080 by 1080, depending on what your project settings are. Now, right now I'm working from a standard 1920 by 1080 project. So these are my output options. But as we saw way back in part two, of our eight part series, uh, you can create a project setting for a square project or for a project that's taller than it is wide. And if you do that, then your options here are going to be different. But ideally, I recommend uh, selecting an output option that most closely matches what your project settings are. So for instance, if I were to output this movie as a movie that's taller than it is wide, as you can see in the little preview window, I would get a video that's letterboxed that, that has black lines above and below it. If I were to output a square movie, same sort of thing. I would get some strange letter boxing here that I wouldn't particularly want. So make sure that your output basically matches the aspect ratio of your project settings. Included in here are also options for outputting an audio only file, for outputting still images, included in these still Im images, by the way, are animated GIFs that run five or 10 seconds. These are kind of fun too. These repeat a motion over and over. And we show you how to do those in another uh, tutorial here. And then there are options to upload directly to social media. The program has built in templates and uh, built in interfacing to send your videos directly to YouTube, to Vimeo, to Facebook, and to Instagram. So a lot of options here for outputting your movie, but it's really as simple as selecting the option that you want, naming it, selecting its location and outputting it. Now there's some other options here that are worth knowing and we cover those in the book. So for instance, if you only wanna share a portion of your movie, that's available also. But once you're done, you're ready to share your project, your movie with the world. And that's really what it's all about. I hope you have a lot of fun with this program and I hope we got you started. If you have any questions at all, be sure and drop by the community forum at moviepix, M-U-V-I-P-I-X.com, uh, where we're glad to answer any questions you got. If you want to know everything about the program, you want to check out the moviepix.com guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. And why not pick up the companion book, the moviepix.com guide to Adobe Photoshop Elements. They're available on amazon.com. I'm Steve Grisetti. I'm the one who wrote the book. And thanks for spending time with me. Hope to see you again real soon. And I hope to see you at MoviePix. Take care.